everybody, welcome back to JC's Creek. My name is Emily, and this is the podcast where we do season by season, episode by episode of J- Pacey and Joey, and aka that is why it's called JC's Creek or Dawson's Creek as we know it. So today we are doing episode six to Green with Love, and this came out on February 16th, 2000, so we believe. If you haven't already, make sure to follow my Instagram, that's Blitter and Potter. My TikTok, that's Pacey and Joey. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment below your thoughts. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first scene that we have is scene one of Pacey and Joey. So they are at a PTA meeting where they're discussing Matt Cal- Caulfield's expulsion. Joey, Dawson, and Pacey are sitting in the seat as it's going on. The crowd is upset over the expression, and Dawson says, Is this going to go well? This isn't going to go well, is it? And Dawson says, Well, it depends on who you ask. And Joey says, Well, if you're engaged, an engaged parent with a mis- misguided agenda, it's going to be great. And the board member says, Correct me if I'm wrong, superintendents. But I don't recall the Board of Education passing any rules that allowed a lunatic to start handing out a death sentence just because one of the kids act like a kid. And parent number two says, um, yeah. And then the superintendent says, please, please, please. As I mentioned, I strongly urge Principal Green to re encourage his decision. But as much as I wish, I, as much as I wish it wasn't so. Principal Green has a final say in all Cape Side High dis- disciplines matter. And Mr. Confell says, Dear Dr. Fin- Dr. Fin- Fieldly? Dr. Finley, may I? And the superintendent says, Oh, yes, please, Mr. Confell. And Mr. Confell says, Do you consider yourself a member of this community? And the superintendent says yes. And Mr. Confell says, Are you going to let this principal personal preach justice of an outsider to ruin my son's future? And Joey says, I can't take this morning more. I have to say something. This is ridiculous. This whole thing has blown out of proportion. And the superintendent says, This is a PTA meeting, young lady, not a pep rally. Now have your seat, please. And Joey says, Well, isn't this going, and isn't anyone going to defend Principal Green for everything he has done? And Mr. Crawford says, Miss Potter, my son tells me you're the one who, whose meal was destroyed. And Joey says, this has nothing to do with me, okay? And Mr. Crawford says, you're exactly right. What it has to do with this is secret chances of a man who's extreme and none of the justice are better suited for the girl and the world zone than our civil community okay this is kind of i don't know like i don't really know what to think of these kind of things like it's not bad but it's not like hmm oh yeah okay and so joey says you do not do you not just say what you i think you said and mr carlo said um what i'm saying is that ed- this educationer was doing his job in capacity none of us have done today and the board member says, if you were doing your job as a parent, Mr. Combo, maybe your son would still be right, still be in school right now. He has filed in the kindness counselor over a thick inch, and everyone applauds, and Joey says, look, Principal Green is a fair man. Mr. Carver says, I'm sure he sees Miss that way to you, dear, and maybe to some other students, whose family don't embarrass, and Joey says, don't what? And Mr. Carver says, don't embrace the values of that we have as a community. And Dawson, shouting, says, you don't know anything about her family. <laughs> Which, okay, all right. And the superintendent says, people, that's enough. As of, as of this Friday at 3 o'clock, a principal green has not read, reduced Matt Conferral's expulsion to more, to more, reasonable sentence I'll tell you I'll ask him if he has this sentence resigned 
and everyone's cheering and applauding and says this meeting is a just and Joey says or Pacey says do you think that just do I think just happened happened <laughs> and then he says Finley going on the red world green into changing his rolling and Dawson says either that or out of town and Pacey says okay and Joey says let's go so one of the things I think this isn't really like I don't know like it is a Joey and Pacey episode I would say but the last episode was more of a Joey and Pacey episode and this thing was kind of more like when you think about it it's more like Principal Green and everything that happened with that and so for here it's kind of like whether they're going to spell or remake Principal Green reassigned so for me I think why didn't Principal Green like it's spell the kid for like two weeks or something. That would have been a lot better, but hey, the drama. The drama works. So then we have scene two of Pacey and Joey. And they are walking along. They're, they're along the waterfront and they're walking together. And may I add, they're not with Dawson. And so Joey says, what happened in there was so unjustful. Yes, not to mention personally dis this memory and Pacey says you know how the system works Joe convents mental dimension and people under 18 are are repeatedly denied the chance to participate in decisions that affect their everyday life and Joey says and problem is that the squeaky will gets all the grease I mean th these idiots rant and rave about low test scores I mean, the people who are perfectly happy with the way things are just sit back and mind their own business. And Pacey says, true, happy, success people rarely attend emergency PTA meetings. Pacey, or Joey says, and teenagers, I mean, come on, they have to clock and provide before they actually sit, sit, set their own PlayStation down turn off the TV and do something about it. And <clears throat> I love how Pacey says, you said it, sister. So who's going to to rally the troops? And Joey says, obviously no one. And Pacey says, you could. And Joey says, ha. And she says, yeah, Joey Potter against the system. What am I going to do? Paint another meal? That will help. And then she's, on the phone talking to AJ and Joey says I don't even know why I bother to go I mean it's a total waste of time there was barely any students there and I got like two sentences before I was attacked and AJ says Joey you can't expect people to rally around a cause that doesn't exist they need leadership they need and Joey says that's what Pacey said and AJ's like Pacey who's Pacey and He's like, what kind of name is that? And I love how he's just kind of jealous about that. So first of all, I love how Pacey has the same idea as AJ. It's just proof that she's kind of falling over the same person, but AJ is a very boring person and Pacey is not. And Bessie comes in the room to get her attention and Bessie says, I think you're going to want to see this. And Joey says, I'm on the phone. And pa Bessie says, no, really. I think you want to see this. And she goes in the room where they're watching TV. And on the news it says, Save schools, but what a cost. Concerned parents demand actions and answers tonight from Cape Side School attendant Briar Filling. The uproar started when a high school girl painted a mural that was intended to bring unity. Instead, all brought was a discord and... and po 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 potential resign resignment of a high school principal under Sins. Holler Green was was far refused to comment publicly on her his decisions and decision to spell Matt Confield a senior. Oh, I see why. I see why they're fighting now. If he's a senior that makes total more sense. Accused of analyzing accused. He said he did it, so Accused of it. Okay, also, don't they have security cameras? Like, couldn't they prove? Anyway, this was the 2000s, so I don't really know. Accused of analyzing the so called union moral and fighting with another boy who took an expression to the prank. Um, 
The other boy was left off only with the community service, leading in this community to question Green's motive and wonder whether he let some kind of a personal agenda affect his judgment. Joey Potter, I like how they just call out the girl. The girl who painted the mural was present tonight and some to best and was caught about Car Car Carville's harsh punishment. And then on Joey on TV says, this is ridiculous. This whole thing has been blown out of proportion. And Joey said, I never said that. And Bessie says, we believe you, sis. And Sherry says, Sherry and WKWB reporting. And Joey says, I mean, I said it, but not exactly in the context. I mean, this isn't fair. This is, no one's going to give me a chance to say anything I want. And AJ says, you're right, they won't. Not unless you stand up and demand what you hear and show them that you're not going to be ignored. And Joey says, what are you suggesting? And so then we have the next scene, which is scene three of Pacey and Joey. And they're in the school hallway and Joey's hanging up posters to get everyone to attend the rally. And Pacey sees her doing and comes up to her. And Pacey says, well, Nori Ray, looks like you took my advice. And Joey says, and what advice was that? And Pacey says, this meeting, rallying the troops, I have to say, this is a big step forward. I mean, I know Cape Side, uh, the cruiser, far and wide, breaking down sexual stereotypes, arranging road teachers, but you, you're definitely more the rebel without the cause cost. So look at you. I just want to say, don't hesitate to ask for any help that you need, seeing this whole idea was my idea in the first place. And Joey says, you're encouraging, yes, but then this meeting was hardly your idea. And Pacey says, if you want to take it that way, it's fine with me. But it written like, it written like this whole thing called to action. And Joey says, I didn't. And they walk around the corner and AJ is actually hanging out posters, which... Uh, okay, but I like how Pacey was, knew that it was his idea in the beginning. And Joey just completely denies it. And AJ says, I'm all out. And Joey says, me too. And Basie says, mm-hmm. -mm. And Joey says, oh, right. You guys have, you guys have never met. Um, AJ, this is Basie. Basie, this is AJ. And AJ said, right, the one with the peculiar name. How are you doing? And AJ and Joey are standing there close to one another. And you can just, you can just see on Basie's face that he's just like, why am I even bothering with this thing? And... Joey says, AJ came down to help us with the rally troop. And AJ said, yeah, to give Cape Side a small taste of some true college protest action. And the student says, quick, Green's coming inside and you guys got to see this. And they step outside and the crowd was like with camera crew and everyone's taping and Green's walking down the hallway and they're chanting, <clears throat> Green's to extreme, Green's to extreme, like they're chanting that over and over and over again. And he comes to the door to find Joey, Pacey, and AJ watching all of this. And he says, Joey, after you. So one thing I do and don't like about this part of the episode is the fact that, like, they do make it, like, very, like, high intense kind of thing. But obviously, like, like, they're kind of making, I don't know. I think it was Pacey's idea, but you know how, like, you hear that phrase, like, you hear it three times and it kind of hits you? I feel like that's kind of what it was. So then we have the next scene, which is scene four of Joey and Pacey. So they're outside the superintendent's office and they're students pickling here, making. And Joey, Pacey, AJ are among them and Dawson is setting up his camera by Gal gets in gets ready for the story with Joey. And Joey says, we, bar we barely have people to fill up a softball team, let alone change the world. And Pacey says, Rome wasn't built in a day, Joey. And AJ says, thanks for your doing this. Hot coffee is great for tomorrow. And Pacey says, no problem. So where's Joey? And, and AJ says, she's getting ready for clips of Okay, so apparently, I don't, I don't know. So AJ says she's getting ready for a clip sub, and Joey is standing with Gail and Dawson setting up for the interview, and Gail says, I'm going to ask you a series of questions about the nature of the protest, where it comes from, and then I think you're going to concentrate. And Sherry comes over, and she, 
And she's like, Gail, what is this? And Gail says, I'm doing a story on Gail Green's situation. And Sherry says, for cable? And Gail says, no, no. Truth be told, I was thinking about submitting it to Rogers at the station. And Sherry says, good luck with that. Joey, I'd love to get a follow-up interview with you. And Joey says, in your frosted blonde dreams, Barbie. And Sherry leaves. And Joey says, you didn't think I was too hard on her. And Dawson says, felt about right to me. And AJ comes over and with Pacey falling behind. And Joey says, what is this? And Pacey says, superintendent family wants to see you. And Joey says, me? And AJ says, this is a sign of risen failing. And Joey says, why do I get that feeling? And Pacey says, that's the feeling is an unscripted, independent jerk who cares more about the job of security than anyone else what he thinks. So he's going to threaten you, Joe. I don't think you should go there. And Joey says to AJ, what do you think? And he says, I go. Now, I don't know why she's asking AJ all, like, all the questions. Every time Daisy says something, she just looks at AJ like, mm -hmm. What do you think? Like, I'm like, oh, girl, no. So then we have the next scene, which is scene one of Joey. And so she is in the superintendent's office, and Joey comes in with the superintendents. And the superintendent says, Miss Josephine Potter, correct? And Joey says, yes. Which, I kind of funny that, it's kind of funny that, like, in season one and season two, she would correct anyone who said Josephine, and now she just says yes because it's the board. And so the superintendent says, have a seat. I assume you know who you are. And Joey says, the man who shows up at the football game, graduation. Which, bad, bad. And superintendent says, I appreciate your sense of humor, though I prefer to think my involvement in your life as a touch more personal than that. I hear you're responsible for the dance climbing outside. Not true? Which, I mean, not really. Like, the parents were the one who started this, so... Why is Joey even involved with this, first of all? And Joey says, well, parents can pick a lot of school, students can pick a lot of student's office, and the superintendent says, fair enough. And what is your intention to accomplish with this First Amendment display? And Joey says, well, it's our belief that Principal Green was right in spelling Matt Confield, and he shouldn't be forced changing his role simply because, and the superintendent interrupts her, and says no one's forcing him. And Joey says, pardon, Dr. Dr. Finley, but he threatened to ask for his resentment. resentment. And superintendent says, that wasn't a threat, that was direct request. And Joey says, I was a representative of the student body. I am telling you what is happening in, to Principal Green is wrong. And the superintendent says, as far as I know, all of the representatives is more handful of the students out there. And that's it. And Joey says, well, more for us. And the superintendent says, oh, really? And Joey says, yeah, a lot more. In fact, we have a signed 300, 300, it's like 300 signatures. And superintendent says, 300? And Joey says, mm-hmm. And we're going to start a rally tomorrow night. I mean, you think the crowd last night was vocal? Just you wait. And the superintendent says, I didn't know anything about this. And Joey says, make no mistake mistake dr finley there is no voice that doesn't agree with what's happening here and the voice will be heard and the superintendent says i'm all ears now i suggest you and your friends hurry back into class before principal you love so dearly has to stir you attention for cutting class and joey says who's sick i'm out with the cold so obviously joey is impulsive in this situation but for good cause because she just says oh yeah we have 300 signatures which by the way, I don't even think there's 300 kids, which leads us to the next scene, which is scene five of Pacey and Joey. So everyone is at the B&B &B working on different things, and Pacey is saying, and like, uh, he says, it might be nice to have a heads up before you make a position with over 300 signatures. I don't, he's like, I don't we have 300 students which i'm surprised the superintendent didn't really say anything about that and aj and joey are standing there while pacey is just like upset about the whole thing and aj says she just she had to bluff or how else was she going to get hit the guy's respect and joey says right look pacey just tell us what we need to do so we can come people like people can come to the rally 
And Basie says, well, the bluff is going to be a little bit harder to pull off. I mean, a petition is easy enough, but you just can't convince kids you are... You are camping for an extra chocolate milk days at the cafeteria. But a rally, you gotta get an actual body. And AJ says, those are the problems. We need solutions. It's kind of funny to me. Like, okay, like, mm, those are the problems. We need solutions. Like, Pacey knows that there's a bunch of problems. But he's just, like, kind of thinking logically. Because that's just how Pacey is. And so, Jen walks up. And she says, which we have. Pacey said that he and Tenants, which, which Jack and I is out at the Cape Side website. And Andy is getting a word fa famously. And Chen grabs Pacey's arm before he says anything stupid. She, she knows about his feelings with like Joey. So therefore, she just takes him out of the situation. And so Andy grabs the phone and, to Bessie who takes it. And Jack shows Joey the button the banners who uh, like she he needs her approval which she says it's great and AJ looks kind of disgusted and Jack ordered 500 copies and Joey says how are they going to buy that and Jack says we are not and he says Pacey managed to get copy store run them for free and Joey asks he did and Jen comes over and, and he she goes yes he did. Which, I like how, again, Pacey did something without being told, which is very good for him. And it just proves how much, like, there wasn't the fact that, like, Pacey didn't do anything. Like, in this episode. I said earlier, it wasn't really a Pacey and Joey episode, which it kind of was when you think about it. Because Pacey was always there for Joey. And he did so many things that just involved them two together. So Joey walks up to everybody and says, Attention everyone. Look, I know y'all are going are working really hard. And Pacey's face just shows that he's listening to her and every single word that she's saying. And she continues by saying, But by tomorrow night, we need 200 signatures at least. Keep up the hard work. We got many miles before we can sleep. Good job. And Pacey claps and then stares at her. And AJ asks if she hasn't, if she has done this before. And she said, yeah, I can't believe I'm doing it. I can't believe I'm doing it now. And AJ says, thanks to you, you are who, and she goes, thanks to you, you are who convinced me in the first place with everyone you do here. I can't have done it without you. But Pacey was literally the first one who came over to Joey and said, hey, I think you should do this. And then as soon as AJ heard it, like, AJ heard when everything was happening, like, he convinced her. Like, I don't really think that's how it worked out, but it's <laughs> okay. And, jo and Pacey just kind of sadly stares as AJ kisses Joey. And Jen asks if, she's, if he's okay. And Pacey says, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to hang up some flyers. And he's obviously hurt. And he walks away, which I kind of feel bad for Pacey in this scene because Jen knows how Pacey feels, but Joey's just so blind to see it. I think she kind of sees it, and that's why she's leaning on AJ more than Pacey. But I think during stress times, that's who she goes to because AJ, AJ is quote-unquote her boyfriend, but we only see him like three episodes. And so, Bessie says to uh, Joey, okay, I got a phone call. And Joey asks, what is it? And Bessie says, some concerned citizens that wanted me to know that using high school, high school teenagers that upon an attack is not the best way of keeping my business going. And Joey's like, I don't get it. And Bessie's like, you don't. You never do. And she walks away, which I'm like, Dang, Bessie. And Joey looks shocked. Like, my reaction was shocked, too. But I think Bessie was more scared about the B&B &B and how it was going to come out. Because they already don't have the best reputation of family. So, therefore, it just kind of makes it shown that. So, then we have the next scene, which is scene two of Joey. And Joey says, let's see, it's probably just some super little prank that I, w I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Confell." Confound it himself. 
And Billy says, yes, just relax. I'm sure it's no big deal. And they're in the kitchen, by the way. And thus he says, if it wasn't a prank, we can't afford to acknowledge the people who have mortgage on this house, or at least Bodie. And I can't, we can't be st living here while, and um, we still have to be living here when you go to college. And Joey says, so I'm supposed to just sit around patiently until I get out of this town? I'm not allowed to Chris criticize it or change it in any way. And Bessie's like, I didn't say that. And Joey says, well, I can't stop now, Bessie. Is that what you want me to do? And Bodie says, Joe, Joe, no one's asking you to stop. I think it, I think that he just wants, she just wants you to realize the situation. And Joey says, I'm being realistic. And Bessie says, spending your time and effort defending a man who won't defend himself, how realistic is that? Which is very true. Like, throughout all this, like, Principal Gary never talked to the news. He never did any of that. And all of these high school students are. But so Joey says, you should, you, he shouldn't have to defend himself. He didn't do anything wrong. And Bessie says, you sure about that? And... Bessie says, like, you sure he, this guy didn't deserve another chance? And Joey says, of course I am. And Joey says, everyone at this school knows that Cape Sai High is a much better place without Matt Coffin, and the students know and the teachers. And Bessie says, so all the parents were up in the arms, they're just wrong. And Joey says, they aren't, they weren't at, you weren't at the meeting. You don't know what Confound said, okay? He got his own personal agenda, and I'm not going to be talking about his son's ash. And Bessie says, what do you mean? And Bodie says, she means all the concerned citizens won't be fighting this situation so hard if Principal Green were white. And Bessie says, they would still be upset. And Bodie says, upset, yeah. And they would try to take action, but not, but they wanted like a level of anger and hostility and misunderstanding. And they certainly wouldn't try and threaten family of a te some teenager to speak her mind. And Bessie says, I give up. Joe, you can change the world from our living room, fine, whatever. And AJ walks in and Bodie and Bessie leave. Which, in another sense, I feel like Joey, like, wasn't wrong in this situation, but Bessie wasn't wrong either. Like, this grown man isn't defending himself, but, like, teenagers are. And in a sense, like, that makes sense. And it makes sense where Bessie is coming from. Like, she wants Joey to realize the extent of this situation. But in another way, like, Joey, like, is defending her principal. And I feel like the principal wasn't wrong in a way. And, like, I feel like they had to do more than, like, just being like, yep, yeah, you're at spell for the whole rest of the year. I don't know, like, that always kind of got me. I was just thinking about that, which, it's his senior year. So, yeah, like, his dad's going to be fighting for that. And then, like, but also, like, to resign the principal, like, that's extreme. But that's just kind of me. And so AJ, like, says sorry for interrupting. And Joey says, it's okay. And Joey says, maybe if you were paying a guest, this scene would have been even more horrendously awkward. And Joey, AJ says, look, this is probably not the best time to say this, but, and Joey says, you're leaving. And AJ said, yeah, I figured since I always from your sister and completely undermanned the finance responsibility of your family business, my work here is done. And Joey says, you can't leave. I mean, we just started. I couldn't get another room. I could get you another room, maybe something without medical wall. And AJ says, no, thank you. Papers to write, actually papers to grade. Listen, Joe, you think you need me, but you don't. You're surrounded by a lot of people who believe in you. Good people, smart people. I mean, Pacey turned out is not a bad guy. And Joey says, what gave you that idea? And AJ says, I'm an excellent judge of character. I found you tonight. And Joey smiles. So I do like how AJ does realize that Pacey is not a bad guy. Like... He is generally, like, working hard to impress Joey. Like, Joey is just, not impress Joey, that's not the right word, but, like, work for Joey because Joey is really passionate about something. Like, we saw last episode, like, she was very passionate about the mural, and so he did everything in his power to make sure 
that like Joey got what she needed and that's what he's doing in this episode too. So then we have scene one of Pacey where Pacey is hanging up flyers and he's stapling it so hard and Jen says, Pacey, I think you got that one covered. Hurricane won't take it down. And Jen says, you know what might make you feel better if you talk about it? And Pacey says, talk about what? And Jen says, about what's bothering you? And Pacey says, nothing's bothering me. And Jen says, fine. And Pacey says, fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And Pacey says, okay, so... I do have a problem. And Jen says, yeah, I know this. And Pacey says, that's obvious, huh? And they start, at this point, they're walking down the pier. And Jen says, yeah, it's, it speaks for myself. And Pacey says, do you think I, it would be at all possible, I don't know, pretend like it wasn't all that obvious? And Jen says, well, only if we pretend to have conversation about it. And Pacey says, you really want to make me do that? And Pacey says, okay. And Jen says, okay. Or he continues to say, okay. And he says, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that I got myself into a possible situation. Hypothetically seeking, falling for, or was in the process of falling for, a possible person that I, I the possible worst person I could ever fall for. And Pacey says, what would you tell me to do? Which we already know, like, hypothetically, like he fault for Joey. Like, that's basically what he was saying. And Jen says, I guess I would tell you that the possible situation only makes it better by doing something about them. And Pacey says, so I should just go and declare myself to her and she, she can last my face. That's a great idea. And Jen says, how do you know that she'll, that's how she'll react? And Pacey says, well, I have on good authority that my gruff charms don't register on her ro romantic platters. I mean, let's face it, I got the duck you all over me. Which, I think in this sense, like, I feel like Pacey knew that she was going to reject them because she already has, so what makes him think that she's not going to reject him? Like, he's done, she's done it before, she makes remarks about his, like, romantic ways, like, why else would he not think that she would like reject him and so Jen says ducky and Pacey says yeah and Pacey says green one's best friend and the pretty pink the guy who follows and definitely does not get the girl and Jen says yes but he makes the girl feel good about herself he stands there throughout and friends fashion emergency human human relations by lip syncing in the public place and takes on his own problems. And Pacey says, well, she probably don't him for another guy. And Jen says, all right, the question is, this girl you have developed impossible feelings for, are you going to stand there in the very ducky fashion or are you going to let your hurt feelings and pride prevent you from being a friend that so innocently you hurt yourself to be? And Pacey staples another paper, and he says, I guess it just hurts, that's all. And Jen says, just means that you aren't pretending anymore. And Pacey looks in deep thoughts. So I think, we have discussed this before, but I literally think that Pacey is always falling for Joey. From season one to season three. Like, I think there's always feelings for her. And he wanted to cover it up because of Dawson. Because that's why he thinks it's the worst person to fall for is because why shouldn't it be like joey potter is best friends supposedly with dawson leary and so like he's scared that dawson is gonna have the same reaction that he did in season one where he said he didn't want her to like them two to kiss pacey and joey and so now in season three episode 16 why would that change like why in the world would that possibly change for Pacey? Because it wasn't that long ago where Dawson said, I don't want you to kiss her because I still have feelings for her. And what if Dawson had that same reaction? I think that's what Pacey's so scared of. And so Jen, on this aspect, thinks that Pacey is hiding because he doesn't want to get hurt. Like, he doesn't want, like, he doesn't want Joey to have a bad reaction really and Jen has always known that Pacey 
lights, Joey. And I feel like when you think about it, like them two probably had this romantic chemistry for a while and it was kind of obvious to Jen and she knew that and not I don't really think anyone else knew that when you think about it like Andy kind of knew like how Pacey started to like tease Joey but she was kind of too blind to see it Dawson was too blind to see it because he thought Pacey was doing a favor but he's like and he does care about you like that's the thing he said that last episode and then Mitch saw it but he didn't I'm sure Bessie saw it and I'm and Doug sees it and so we have all these people that see it but Pacey just doesn't want to get hurt because he doesn't want to ruin the friendship that is going on so then we have the next scene which is scene two, six of Pacey and Joey and Jen says he did an impressive job don't you think and them two are having the rally and she goes up to Joey and Joey says yeah speaking of Pacey I haven't seen or heard from him all day and then Pacey says testing one two three testing who does okay as you can see we're not having technical difficulties so I like to turn it around to the lady who's responsible for gathering us here tonight let's give her a warm welcome shall we and Pacey says, without further ado, <laughs> yeah, we always say that, Miss Josephine Potter. And Joey says, well, everyone has been coming up to me in the last week asking why I'm doing this. Even people in my family, I'm certainly asked myself plenty of times. And if it wasn't because Matt Confell trashed my, trashed my extra credibility art project, and I swore and turned fans against it, it's because some people in town seem to think that our principal does not know what's best for us. And he is sort of an outsider. But he does, he, he'd be an outsider when he's been there walking the halls of our students with every day ever since September. And he's taken, upon, taken the time to get to know us, figure out our talents, whether they're filmmaking or student government or painting and support and all of us who don't think we know about our talents are. How about being an outsider when he's been there for us every day trying to make our lives better? I thought about what we could do tonight. Talk about how Principal Green made our lives a lot better. So I think in this also, Principal Green is the most supportive in all of them. And I think obviously there's a lot of hype in this episode because he is black and they knew like if he was white it would be different and it's still going on in 2022 like all this different kind of thing with black and white but like there is a different aspect towards it and I think when we go back to how it works and how it's going like we know how Principal Green came in and he he didn't spell Pacey because he knew that Matt was wrong. And Matt is wrong in this situation because he took it upon himself to destroy someone's mural just because he doesn't like it. And that is a child thing to do. And so, especially if he's a senior, like if you're a senior and you're doing that, don't, don't do that. Like, are you kidding me? So when we go back to this, I think really there's not much like, there's not much I can say about this because I feel like this is so much of uh, Principal Green in this episode, even though Principal Green doesn't come in. But it's the fact that, like, we see Joey's character in this. She's a strong, independent person who comes back every single time. And obviously, if you want a more in depth, like, episode towards what they're talking about, you can go to Dawson's Critique. But in the Joey and Pacey individual part, like, we see how much they go on and say, like, this isn't right. We stand up for what we believe in. And obviously Dawson's not really in this, but Joey's the one that's, like, going towards it and going and st standing up for what she believes in, which I really like. 
And Pacey, again, he's supporting her by this. He's, like, making sure she gets enough flyers to put it up. He's stabling it, even though, like, he's angry that Joey doesn't see him working so hard. But he doesn't yell at her. That's one thing I really like. And if it was a Dawson and Joey situation, they would be yelling at each other. So Joey says, okay, no hands down, starting to feel like I'm back in Mr. Peterson's English class. And Andy starts speaking and says, well, the most two important things I learned from Principal Green's were mistakes and setbacks aren't necessarily reversible. And if you can't learn from yourself, then you can't learn. And a speaker says money doesn't treat us like children, even. And then another speaker says, with respect and listen to what we have to say, we're trying to form this. And Nikki says, many of you know that I'm a new kid. And... But what I do know is about my father tells us about the over dinner while we watch TV and we were doing dishes because he talks about you. That, that's all he talks about is his students and his school. And Principal Green comes up there and he finally says something in this episode. Rush know I had mixed feelings about coming here to see me. But after sitting at home thinking about some things my daughter said earlier, I made it clear I need to come. She said, Dad, those people are on your side. They're fighting for you, and they come, want to come and say thank you for your support. Now, neither myself or Dr. Fen Fenley seems to willing to budge on this particular issue, and it looks like I'll be leaving. But as I look around this evening, I'm motivated. I see a room full of people who have chosen har harassment through inner power as individuals. But regardless of the outcome of the situation, know that I thank you. Thank you. And everyone stares and Joey and Pacey have a smile on their face. So one thing I do like about that part of the scene is that it was kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like, Pacey and Joey really show as individuals in this, pers in this place. Well, Pacey is on by Joey's side. So really, Joey is showing as an individual because she's standing up for what she believes in, which I think is a very important thing. So then we have scene seven of Pacey and Joey. So Jen says, so, um, she walks up to Pacey and she says, so did you have a rally to a certain person to slide in a very ducky like man? man? And Pacey says, yeah, mission accomplished. And Jen says, and how do you feel? And Pacey says, to be honest, I feel like duck me. She didn't even thank me. And we see Joey from across the room completely smiling. And it was like this really, really, really pretty smile. And Jen says she will one day. And Pacey, oh, Pacey asked, how, how can you be so sure? And Jen says, because every dog meat has his days. And she said, like, think about Henry. And jo Pacey just stares at Joey. And he, like, has this smile on his face. And it looks, it's like one of my favorite scenes. He has a smile on his face and then he walks away. And it's just proof how much his feelings for Joey has changed because we know that he wanted to have done this before. But it's one of those scenes where like they have all like grown as people and they have grown as their friendship. And so then we go to Joey where she asks, Bodie a piece Friday because Bodie came and he says whenever you are and Joey says you think she'll let us in the house and Bodie says Bessie she she if she doesn't we'll, we'll sleep in the car and Bodie asks if she wants to drive and Joey says stick shift I had enough challenges this week and she sees Bessie and Bessie says hanging down from a challenge that doesn't sound like the Joey Potter I know Certainly wasn't the one in front of all the people tonight. And Joey asks, you saw? And Bessie says, well, Alexander here, he insists on coming. See, he's extremely proud of his Aunt Joey, which I like that because it just, it shows how much jo I bet Bessie was convinced by Bodie to come. And so Joey says, really? And Bessie says, when you're not around, he goes on and on about how talented you are and how smart and how brave. And Joey says, you are on, you are so on. On second thought, maybe I will drive. Which I like how we see Bessie, like, 
get more of like Joey. Like I feel like her and Joey are so similar. Like they're both stubborn. They both go on about certain things. But when you come towards the end, they both come around. It just takes a lot of convincing. So then we see scene three of Joey. And Principal Green is at like, she's in Principal's Green office and she knocks and Principal Green says, come on. Ah, Miss Potter. You've been in my you have been in my office for a long time. Have you gotten yourself in you have got yourself in trouble? I hope. And Joey says you have a few minutes. You could you could still change your mind, and if that is what you want. And Joey says, yeah, oh, and Principal Green asks if that's what she wants, and Joey says, maybe I don't know. And Principal Green says, why is that? And Joey says, I know that you're doing the right thing. It just feels like, it's just, I can't help but feel like maybe I failed you. And you can just tell that she's about to cry. And she says, we, we couldn't stop them. We weren't loud enough or strong enough, and I'm sorry. And Principal Green says, Joey, look at me. Look at me. In all my years of education, I have never felt more successful than I do right now. You understand that? Thank you for fighting for me. And Joey says, you're welcome. And Principal Green says, I guess it's time to go home. And Joey says, after you. Which I kind of like how she does that because earlier he did that. And everyone is clapping and Pacey is there as well. And it's just kind of, it's a really good scene for like Joey as an individual. This part for Joey is a really, really good scene. Because we see her fighting for something that she believes in, which we know that Joey's a very stubborn person, and most of the time it's kind of hard for her. But when she speaks her mind, she speaks her mind. So then we have scene eight of Pacey and Joey, which this is the last scene. And Pacey and Joey are running hand in hand, and he says, Ready to do a couple more steps. Yeah, step right there and prove it. And Joey's just like, Pacey, I don't know where you think here is, but it seems like we're nowhere. And Pacey says, back with me, just for a second. You remember how this whole thing started? It started with a girl, a wall, and a paintbrush. And Joey says, you bought me a paintbrush? And Pacey says, no, Lamo, <laughs> I stole it from your permit collection. Which I like how he... <laughs> He's so sad, like, well, I, didn't, I didn't get you that. And Joey looks shocked, and she goes, you bought me a wall? And Pacey says, not ball, rented. This thing didn't come cheap either, cost me a hundred bucks. And she looks shocked again, and she, she like, practically screams, you bought me a wall? And Pacey says, you already said that already. Look, it's a limited time offering, so you should get crackling. And Joey says, Pacey, did you fail to notice the size of this thing? And Pacey says, I just thought your next minute should be bigger and better than the last one. That's the most important to keep on growing as a person and as an artist. I'm sorry. I have this moment where I had to pause because that's so sweet. Every time I hear that scene, it makes me want to cry. And he says, I also got you this. And he gets the paint out. And he says, I know it's not going to cover the whole thing. But as, it, as the saying goes, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And Joey says, I'm going to need your help on this one. And Pacey says, no, no, no. Not this time. You're on your own, sister. Which is the second time he has called her sister. <laughs> and Joey says, hey. Like, when he starts walking away, she says, hey. You are unbelievable. I am, um, like, as soon as I figured out, I, I think you know it all, you go and you do something outrageous that completely challenges me in a way that no one has ever thought of, think of. Because if I haven't said enough, thank you. And Pacey says, it's about time, Potter. It's about time. And he walks away and Pacey is glad to stay in there. Like, Joey's love standing there at the wall. So, this is where I'm going to compare Dawson and Joey. Or, Dawson and Pacey. So, first of all, 
this was a very tough episode to do because I feel like I'm not one of those people to speak out about like rallies and that sort of stuff. So if I kind of like sounded bored throughout this episode, it wasn't me actually being bored. It was just that I don't want to say the wrong thing. So typically like throughout politics or anything like that, like I try not to say anything because I don't want to end up saying the wrong thing and then hurt someone's feelings. And I think that's just my age and I'll eventually get out of it. But secondly, I want to compare Dawson and Pacey because Pacey, we, we see, like, he, like, clearly bought her wall and showed her how much sh she can do things. Meanwhile, Dawson, literally Dawson does not care to turn up. Like, he calls her art a hobby. He goes on about, like, how he should just she should just repaint it like it's obvious to Dawson it's not the same creative motive as filmmaking however with Pacey he literally I think this also is just his personality like he helps her out like he makes sure everything works out he fights for her once his her art gets destroyed like there is so many things and now there's this where he literally like rented her a wall so that way she can make make a change like she can go out and get something and get it done like you know what I mean and so when we see this episode it's so much more than how Dawson called it a hobby it's how Pacey reacted to her to her thing that she loved and I think when you love someone and they love something else you'll do anything to prove how much that thing will matter to them so you buy it like I have a friend who likes art so what I bought them for their birthday was a sketchbook because I knew how much they love to draw and so I knew that this would work out for them whether it was something else I took the time and bought it off of Amazon but I did something that I knew that she would like and that would encourage her to go on and so or it's a simple thing where like buying your friend a gift card like it's little things like that where it encourages them to continue on and so for Pacey he continues with her with a paintbrush and some paint and he tells her like he, he basically told her like hey you got this and he said that it's important that you grow both as a person and as an artist so he didn't want her to basically stop doing the thing that she loved just because someone knocked her down like just because Principal Green did resign doesn't mean that you need to completely stop what you're doing and stop going on for what you need to do. Like this is something that is going to hold on to you your whole entire life. So why stop now? Why stop growing when you have so much potential to grow with? And I feel like that is where Casey is coming with. And when you think about it, it's not bad at all. Like, I generally think when Pacey goes on to say, like, you need to grow and you need to grow now, like, it's not him saying, oh, like, I think that you should just repaint it on the school property. And it's not like Pacey didn't do anything. Like, Pacey stood up with her and he did everything in his power to make sure that this wasn't going to bring her down. Like, he made sure and all her his power but he was not going to let her fail and even though there was a lot of things that happened throughout this episode even though there was a lot of things that happened with principal green and joey as an individual pacey pacey really 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 likes joey and it shows throughout this episode because th throughout every scene that we see joey where she's like standing up for what she believes in, Pacey was right there next to her. And Jenny even saw that and he, she was like, so you're not gonna stand there acting like it's nothing. Like you have to go up and you have to say something eventually. Like Doug said that, Jen said that, like there's so many things where people are telling Pacey that you need to stand up and say something because Pacey, Doug even said to Pacey, like the butterflies are eventually gonna go away and one day it's gonna be too late. So you have to tell her. And he was about to tell her, but then he realized it was probably a bad mistake. And then Jen even said, like, don't let your pride get the best of you. Like, it's okay if, like, it doesn't work out. And I think that's where he was scared of. But he just continued on and making Joey really, like, 
love the things that he's doing for her. And even AJ saw how much Pacey cared for Joey. And it was completely obvious. And so when he goes on and like says like you need to keep doing this joey's response was like wow this guy is unbelievable like you are like she's amazed by how he is just doing something completely outrageous and completely challenged me in a way that no one else can think of and she's like if i haven't said it thank you and that's where jen knew that Joey was going to say thank you because that's kind of Joey's personality too. Like eventually she'll come to her senses and she's like, even Henry, like take him for example, he comes to his senses. And I feel like when you get that aspect and when you get the reality of that, like you know how much Joey and Pacey are meant to be in these past, like past 16 episodes. Like, these past 16 episodes have been revolved around Joey and Pacey one thing after another. And Pacey just, he, it's like, Joey finally realized how much he's challenging her. But, like, every single thing, like, from the B&B &B to now, like, he's been challenging her from the moment they have been friends. And I feel like when you think about it, like, he, he remembers things. Like, from, I think Joey might have told him about the B&B &B and that's why he did it but he blamed it on labor work. Like he never stopped encouraging him, her from one thing after another because he cares about her and he wants her to succeed in life. So, if you like this episode, please make sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel, that's Jason's Creek Podcast, where I post every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's also other platforms that you can listen to, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Make sure to review this podcast with kind words please only make sure you comment subscribe share whatever you need to do and also you can catch every episode again on friday saturday and sunday i would love to hear your thoughts on instagram that's winter potter and my tiktok is pacey and joey i hope to see you guys again friday and saturday and sunday i love hearing your guys thoughts so please 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 make sure to comment down below bye guys